Good evening, everybody. Welcome to live painting, live lockdown painting. Um, let's go for a walk, shall we, up a rocky gill. There's a waterfall up here I'd like to show you. And I'm going to make a start straight away. Sorry, we don't have a palette for you to look at tonight. I've got that there to show you some color mixing. But I'm working in acrylic. You'll notice the dark background. This is a particular technique, which I use quite a bit. It's an old master method, but still very popular today. You could work this in oils. No problem with that. The thing is that if you're working in oils, you need to get this dry. This is a, a dark priming. It's not black, but you could use black. See how dramatic that dark foundation layer is. trying to establish a upper region to the painting. That mixture there is raw umber with blue, in this case Prussian blue. expect this to take me about 20 25 minutes particular technique I'd like to demonstrate. It's something I use all the time in my paintings. A way of applying the colour. I'm hoping that looks a bit like a, a mist hanging in a upper region of a rocky valley. We're close into a waterfall. So we've reached the location. We're ready for <clears throat> ready for action
excuse me, I just need to find the brush. Here we have it. It's a little fan brush there. The reason I can't show you the palette as usual is the paint's rather fluid, it would just drip off. Let me show you some colour. This is already mixed up. You see the, the consistency there. Maybe if I put a splash of colour over here, you'll see how insubstantial that is. Can you see it's a, a weakened film of paint? The way this is going on, I would call it a scumble. It's related to glazing. Before I do, trusty cup of tea as per usual. I have some other colours mixed up ready to scumble. I've got like a bluey grey here. If you're working in oils, you'll need to use a medium. I'm using a, an acrylic medium here, a gloss medium with water to thin the colour. What you're looking for is a consistency that allows the colour underneath To play a part. See I can push this around on the surface. And it creates marks in the paint. A few other colours as well, these muted greens. Hope you can see the marks that's establishing in the paint. You'll see it more dramatically with the next mixture. This is a lovely burnt sienna with ochre plus white. It's an opaque colour, but you'll see it's thinned sufficiently that it allows the dark colours underneath, or if you were using black. To show through and wouldn't you say that gives a excellent impression of rock structure all these little textures and that technique with a flat brush pushing through the paint changing color from time to time like a blocky crystalline structure. If you're like me, always exploring these sublime reaches of the landscape. you'll uh, be aware that it's a very rich in fern and liverwort and mosses abound. See, pushing up, that gives a sense of a highlight where you create these little ledges of light. And there's a perspective as well. See, this is way above eye level, so it's tilting almost like the, the lines of, of a roof. reintroduce darks. This is Romb. We can wipe back and expose little crevices in the rock. Let's leave 
a fissure running through this rock face. It's just the dark, almost black. I was using pure blue mixed with pure umber, even some crimson and some dark viridian. Let's have another fall here. Little rivulets coming into the equation, finding their way through the landscape. And see, I've tried to create a mist, mist in the valley. We need to go to town on this rock. These places are just abound, as I said before, with vegetation. It will cling to the ledges and it will cascade off anywhere it has purchase. Great trails of moss and fern. The dark foundation is a great technique for this subject. I suppose it's almost like an interior, so you're creating all the shadowy background. We're sort of leaving Lake District pure, but we're still in Cumbria. It's the, the kind of rock that you might find on the way over to the Dales. I've been exploring around Sedbra quite, Sedbra quite a bit. Where you have these um, bedding plains of rock rather than the, um, the volcanics in the lakes. You've got this sedimentary rock, which produces those fantastic falls that um, most famously at Ingleton, Thornton Force, where you can walk behind the water. Place for hideouts. How the, the sunlight can be brought to bear just by pushing these scumbles into shape. A little more vegetation, maybe. Let's have some spongy moss on these ledges. Ochre with bright green. kind of recessed interior there with these cool grey rocks reforming. Coming down towards eye level, look how the angles will change. We're looking for the plunge pool where the waterfall will strike into a deep pool. See those blue colours receding back into shadow. Coming out into sunlight, if any sunlight reaches into here.
Let me just anal analyze that technique if you can see closely. I'm applying color, pushing through, and it releases these marks and it deposits a highlight up towards the upper surfaces of these rocks. Perhaps a little more sunlight here. Yes, indeed, I can see an area here to bring up the highlights. Now, it's about time we brought in the star of the show, which is this uh, spill of translucent water finding its way through the shapes of the landscape. Let me just identify a bank on this side. There's a magical waterfall that uh, is well worth a visit called Uldale Force, Uldale Force. And that's not far from Sedba. Partly inspired this painting, although I wouldn't say this is topographically true to that location. As you see, we're left with a deep green pool Probably have some pebbles here and there. Little bits of fragmented rock towards the water. To make the water look shallow, we add a lighter color. And then we grade it back into that, that deep green recessed area. Need some paint medium. The lighter area suggests shallowness and the darker area suggests depth. Okay. So glad you could make it tonight everybody we've had some fantastic responses i think we've got people looking in from far afield as well as the uk and ireland we've got people in australia manila of course the us which is great to think that we can uh, all get together at this uh, this time and enjoy some painting <clears throat> oil painters now put that aside for a week let it dry, but acrylic painters make a cup of tea and then carry on. Or in this case, dry it off with a hairdryer. Pretty rock solid now, I'd say. Not bad at all. We need some um, some paint medium. Let's do that now. Just to um, lubricate things here. 
you might see a faint milkiness there. But that's the acrylic medium, it's the acrylic emulsion, and that will probably dry back and disappear. But if it doesn't, I think you'll agree, it gives a hint of, um, just a little hint of uh, mist, which I'm only too happy to accentuate. A little bit of white mixed with blue, just in here. Do you remember this from last time? And that's the, um, the stippling technique for manipulating glazes and, sc and scumbles. Trying to create a faint plume of blue-gray mist these translucent veils of uh, spray. This is nicely greased up with the paint medium. Here's an ins insubstantial white with blue. It's got um, paint medium in with it and some water. We just tap in where we want the flow to appear. And then we can practice here. We then pull it with a clean brush. You need to look at the geology that you've created to see if you can create a response to the shapes in the rock. trick is a ghostly soft edged effect so that you have a sensation of the rocks glimmering through the flow then they strike and it, we do it all over again Let's reinforce that with some stronger light color, almost pure white with a bit of yellow in it, just from the top. And rapidly that loses its strength and turns into that silvery veil of color. Now we can enjoy the frothing, foaming water as it strikes into the pool. I'm adding the blue-gray as it comes away from the impact and dispersing it back over the dark green pool. finding its way behind these rocks. A 
the dark foundation you can remove some of that to create the flow. bubbles a little more highlighting I think we're there for tonight you may just pick up some texture appearing in here that's the paint medium and the liquid content of the acrylic creates those little patterns. Oil painters, you would use something like liquid. And don't forget the drying time, about a week between your base color and the water. I'm just warming up, just getting into the subject, but uh, I try to keep these entertaining and fairly short and I hope informative. It's great that you could be with us. There's my Rocky Gill waterfall. I think probably like to do a bit of work up there to um, fade it out a bit and I can apply a scumble over that to do the job. Maybe you'd like to see that. Just a bit of paint medium, a bit of pale insubstantial bluey gray. Um, missed out those upper surfaces. looking into the light maybe tidy up the sky now it's dried off I can give it a second coat can't really find a clean brush now but if I really wanted to brighten things up here but it's a subject of contrasts of the heavy structure of the rock the delicacy of the translucent water and the radiant light of the, uh, the misty backdrop. Thanks for joining us, everyone. And uh, as long as this goes on, we'll, uh, we'll keep trying to um, do some painting demonstrations and all join in. Hope you can give that a go if you've got your paints about you. And a very good evening to you all. Thank you.